isn't there an LNG port in Boston Harbor that's not being used? So why are we building more? There's two. Thank you. There's two in Boston. They have never been used. I don't know if everybody also knows. Well, I was talking about the the. It's supposedly be for export uh, for import, but it's probably going to end up for export. That just happened at a place called Cove Point in Maryland. Oh, just so everybody's really clear, it can happen. Um, the company says it can't. It can. It did. And this is you know this is why we're not we're going to pay any attention to what they say. All right, this is, uh, <laughs> this is interesting. There were two judges in the town uh, that one actually works with Crestwood, and he had to recuse himself. <laughs> uh, he actually did it, which was good. Uh, but it's, it's the judge that makes the decision. And the, judge, the other judge is still in cahoots with the gas and oil company? The, he works for them. Can we get him out of office? Well, I hope they can. They <laughs> would like to hear how we could get him out. Well, I mean, these are elected positions. They're, they're elected. Well, but if it's a conflict of interest, he's breaking the law. No, what he's done is, is uh, recuse himself on, on decisions relative to these protesters. So he doesn't make, he doesn't make that decision. Okay, so it's going a yeah. labyrinth. Yeah. It's a labyrinth, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so, you know, the one that's been in the, uh, uh, in the literature is, is the Josephine Brine uh, treatment plant. And that's one that, how many years ago, Dan Voltz originally brought this out, that Pittsburgh's water was being contaminated. Uh, and that threw everything up in arms. Uh, you know, everyone started thinking, wow. And researchers started jumping on this. So there's a group at Duke that has published now two, at least two papers. They've gone down, and they've gone down recently and found um, uh, other chemicals in the water um, that combine with things. And I'm trying to get back to your question. The Josephine Brine plant is an, they treat only industrial waste. So that's not a, a public owned uh, water treatment plant. Those plants, at least in Pennsylvania, are not supposed to be taking drilling waste anymore. And what was that, 2011 or something like that, that, they, that Pennsylvania said no more. And that was all because of Dan Volta's research uh, at the University of Pittsburgh School of Public Health. Um, so whether the whether the Josephine plant is privately owned or not, I, I think that was your question. I, I was really concerned about New York State. Oh, New York State. So I am I am not sure about. Do you? Well, I, I mean, in New York State, there's no there's no ban on any wastewater treatment plant taking uh, you know this waste, and some of them have been doing it. Uh, actually, in our little area in Ithaca, New York, there was one uh, wastewater treatment plant in the, uh, in, it's called Cayuga Heights, who had been taking it and dumping um, the effluent into our lake, but they were caught and they, st they stopped it. Uh, and, and then there were other ones uh, uh, in the town of Auburn, and it was a, it was a, it was a town owned one that had been taking them. But they're the only ones that are really equipped. There are, there are a few of them, I can't, I can't remember, there's one in Buffalo area, and there are maybe two or three others that may be equipped for actually treating it, but we don't really even know much more about that. People are being served with their eminent domain papers, possibly as I'm speaking. 80% um, of the line has been convinced that they should sign contracts with the, with the company, but a standing 20% of uh, folks are bravely saying, I won't do it. And um, they have been, they are being issued these warrants. Uh, people are being hounded. People are getting their uh, eminent domain papers as they come out of school with their kids, when they come out of church on Sunday, and I'm not joking you. And evidently people have heard stories of people shining lights in their house to try and find out if someone is in fact home to be served. So yes, people are, are standing up and not signing papers and trying to protect themselves and their property now from having surveyors come onto their land. Um, it sucks. Yeah. Uh, f folks who are standing up or sitting down and not allowing uh, the, the gas industry to take their property, making them take it, I apologize, they are doing this with, the, with also the thought that if they don't, they will not be liable for the work that is done on their property. In fact, we've been told that folks who do sign on to contracts are in fact now liable for work that is done on their property. And that is, 
if I, as far as I'm concerned, the best, if, I mean, the easiest reason for to say no way. And by the way, after folks have given permission, there is a, pot, a way to go about rescinding that, um, that, that contract. You can send a rescind letter out to the industry and, um, and that works too. Yes, people have been uh, pointing this out all along, and um, luckily the politicians are not a uh, one-note chorus. They actually do have their own thoughts, and they have multiple reasons why they're against it. Um, and uh, we welcome the rest of the politicians with their alternating view of why it's no good to join us, too. So, um, but yeah, there, there, it, it is. It's a basic issue that there's nothing to be benefited in the in the community. George, thank you. Yeah, so I just want to say that um, maybe, you know, with what George just said, that's true for that sort of project before, like, say, a compressor station or a processing plant. The farmers either sell their land or uh, they're leasing, and they make a lot of money. Um, and it's fracturing communities. We're working with a group in Madison County for that, um, the, the sheds. It's actually, there's a group there that's fighting it, Madison County Preservation. So now there are five proposed sites and FERC uh, will decide in the spring. Um, and from what we've learned with doing some mapping, um, you know, these, these, these farmers who, who lease their land, and usually it's one farmer with a lot of land, um, they make a lot of money. And so um, they're very upset with these groups that are fighting and saying, wait a second, what, this is our community, what about us? You're making all this money, you're selling it, you might even move what about us? So uh, I just wanted to just point that out that there, there is, you know, these people who lease uh, do make some some money. So I just want to make one more comment. I, I, you know, I'm not going to say anything about the downstate po politicians because I don't really know them. Uh, upstate, I think it's really easy to determine, um, you know, who you can talk to because there are certain politicians. Uh, you just have to look where their funding comes from, and then you know what will happen what their decision will be. Uh, one of the things that's happening up at this Brookman Corner station uh, for the New Market Project is that uh, six communities around the project are actually signing resolutions uh, against the project, not necessarily against the project right now, actually. Most of the resolutions um, say that they're re asking for another hearing in their community instead of a, a community that was, say, 60 miles away. Or, and the second thing they're asking for is um, an EIS, an Environmental Impact Statement, instead of an EA, an, envir assess an Environmental Assessment. The EA is what they're doing at, in this project and, almost, and most projects. And that is an abbreviated process, which makes it a whole lot easier for the application to go through. You know, there, there is a, a movement, at least, you know, in some government, small governments, you know, city governments in, in, in uh, academia to divest from fossil fuels. And there has been some success in some places. Uh, we, we've worked at Cornell to try to uh, bring that about. Uh, the faculty voted uh, overwhelmingly to ask the trustees to divest from fossil fuels, uh, and they didn't do it. Uh, we're, hoping, we're hoping they could revisit that soon, but Ithaca, our town, where we live, has either divested or said they're going to divest. So, that, that, you know, there are quite a few places that are, are looking at that, and, and the ra part of the rationale is that you, you know, these companies can't burn all the carbon they, they own, and so they're going to have stranded assets eventually, and, and we've already seen it in, in recent uh, weeks, their, their stock prices are tumbling. So it's actually perhaps a really good financial move to sell your energy stocks. <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, George, did you have a? Yeah, I'd like to just add something that, that nobody touched on, which is that, um, I don't know if anybody's aware, but uh, Cornell University just agreed to buy all of the power from a community-owned wind farm called Black Oak Wind Farm. Uh, it, the investment in it is open to all New Yorkers. Um, and uh, this, this is the kind of cash crop that could be being done upstate instead if, if things could just get organized to do it this way. Um, 
there's a lot of small projects that could be profitable for a small investment pool that a large uh, hedge fund would just not be interested in this type of thing. But it's a community owned project. So um, I would suggest that everybody just look into what's going on with that. The woman who is running that is phenomenal. Great. Thank you so much, George. Um, I'm afraid we have to we have to close it here. Um, the uh, uh, one thing I will say, um, I'm just going to take off my my moderator hat and put my put my sane energy project uh, activist hat back on, um, is that we've heard from uh, we've heard from people you know today who are working on a handful of projects um, on the map um, that we were uh, showcasing before the you are here fracking infrastructure map. There are 137 projects, um, infrastructure projects, compressor stations, pipelines, uh, waste disposal areas um, that are all, you know, that are all right here in, uh, in New York State. Um, one, uh, one thing I will say about um, what we can do, many of these questions about, uh, you know, what, is our, what are our legal options, you know, how can we hit them in the pocketbooks, you know, what are the sort of different things that we can do. Um, one thing I will say is that we are living in New York City, you know, and people pay attention to what happens in New York City. We're a very loud city, um, you know. We have uh, we have farther reach, perhaps, um, in terms of in terms of the media and in terms of setting the tone um, for what kinds of energy paths are followed by cities um, across across the country. And um, getting back to the point that was made earlier about uh, you know how these. Uh, how these projects are cited in areas that really don't have a lot of, you know, political clout um, and access to, to resources. Um, you can only imagine what the outcry would be if they tried to cite something like these projects on the Upper East Side, right? <laughs> You know, it wouldn't happen. And so the fact that we have that privilege, this is where the environmental justice part of this comes in. Because we have that privilege and because we are located in an area where people do listen to us, um, I would argue that it's not just a nice idea but a responsibility for us to get involved with these different... Uh, these different struggles and um, I'm very happy to say that in your little like gift bags There are all kinds of ways that you can follow up and uh, get involved with any number of the great 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 people who are working on these infrastructure projects all over the state um, so once again um, Thank you so much uh, Michelle and Robert for coming down and uh, talking about your book the real cost of fracking everybody go buy a book um, there's going to be signings and you know, it's going to be great and thank you so much Susie and George and Matt for coming down Thank you all for coming out I'm sorry. Thank you so much for bo to book court for having us here and to the um, Thank you very much They should be on your chair Thank you.